Hello, and uh, today I'll be giving you a short tutorial on how to install Motec and uh, how to briefly use it in iRacing. So first of all, we need to install Motec. So go to the Motec homepage, go to Products, then go to i2 Data Analysis, and then click this link here. Now make sure not to click the standard versions, but to get the pro version because it has a few features that will prove useful once we get up and running in iRacing. So just click this link here. Now I've already in, in, uh, downloaded it here, so I'm just going to skip this step. So once you've finished downloading it, navigate to the folder where you've downloaded it to, and then double click here. Take a moment to load up. Next. Nobody reads these anyway. Next. All right. So now if you want to see the README file, leave this checked, but I'm just going to open Motec IT Pro. So this opens up the first time you use Motec. It's a new workspace wizard. Next. So it gives you four pro profiles to choose from. It auto-generates a few worksheets for you to use. So until iRacing gives us drag, drag racing, or engine tuning, we're just going to use a circuit profile. Now you can name this whatever you want, so I'm just going to name it Beginner. Then you can change the location, but I'm just going to leave it as default. Just as a summary, finish, and it brings you up. So now you have a bunch of these tabs you can use, and this is an auto-generated one. It's pretty standard. It's a lot of useful information here, but it's not its not optimized for iRacing, so to speak, because it uses a lot of channels which we don't get from iRacing. And channels are just uh, sensor data that we gain from uh, different uh, sensors on the car. For example, we can get ride height, we can get suspension position, stuff like that. So we don't need a lot of engine stuff, so I'm going to go over how to remove the stuff that we don't need later. But now you can just click through a few of these, and all these graphs are blank because we don't have a log file open. But I'll, again, I'll get into that a little bit later. So you can just click through these, and then drop down here. Gives you a broad uh, category of what you want to look at. Sample is just a little bit of everything here. So once you're done looking with that, you can now, actually, we have to go and uh, get Moo. Now Moo is an application that converts the IBT file that iRacing outputs into your telemetry folder and converts it into something that Motec can read. So to do that, we're just going to go to this link here. Again, links are in the description. Go to Moo Installer, download it. Again, I have it downloaded already. So once you've done that, open the file up, double click. I've already have it installed, so just click through it. Should be pretty simple. I'm just gonna hit repair. Done. Now it's gonna launch. So it's gonna give you a few options here. So this is where it shows you which uh, files it's outputting. So just as a demonstration, I've uh, put a few files in there. But first, you're gonna have to choose what format you want it to be in: CSV or Motec. We're going to leave it at Motec for now. Uh, metric or empirical units, in other words, American or the rest of the world. Um, now, import directory is almost always going to be this link here, where this is going to be your name. Unless you've changed it somehow, which uh, I'm not sure there is a way to do that at the moment. Nevertheless, uh, if you want to get telemetry from a different folder, just click this and navigate to the folder you want. Now the export directory is where Motec puts the files that is that are converted. You can put them in the same folder, but I, I find that it gets messy after a while. So I tend to put them in a folder within the telemetry folder so as to keep them uh, nice and neat. Auto-enable telemetry is just uh, an option where it automatically turns on the telemetry when you're in iRacing. Uh, I turn that off because uh, 
I just turn it on whenever I need it to be on, and I don't need to log every single lap that I do. If you have the hard drive space for this option, I'd go ahead and do it. Now, export lap threshold just gives you a lower limit uh, for the file to be converted. If uh, there's less than one lap completed with this value here, it the move won't convert the file. So if you just put it to five, or you can put it to zero, which means every single lap will be converted. I leave it on one. Personal preference. Now, remove iris telemetry deletes the file, the original one, after it's been converted. I tend to leave this on never, because uh, the files tend to get big, but they aren't so big that this becomes an issue. And then show so that settings on startup just means that this will appear every time you open Moo. And then save current setup is off. All it does is saves a copy of the setup into the export directory here uh, at the end of a stint. So as you can see here at the bottom, you can sk it's skipping laps because it's, uh, it's less than this value here. So we can close this. Uh, it stays running in the background after you close, so that is not an issue. So back to Motec. So once you've done that, once you've gotten some files from iRacing, you can just hit open log file here. Now Motec gives you a sample file here from Calder. It's a real life file from a car. So it's just uh, good to look at. Pretty fun. You can see what the driver is doing here. But uh, if you want to look at laps that you've done, you can just hit the close button here and then open log files. So now we've got to navigate to our telemetry file, which is going to be in documents, iRacing, and then telemetry. So I have a bunch of telemetry files in here, but yours is most likely going to be a little bit less than this. So what I like to do is I first like to set up the columns here because there's a lot of information that we don't need. For one, get rid of engine ID. Second, event and session give you the same reading here, so it's just a waste of space. I'd like to move session over to the right. So this column here is what's not shown, and this column is what is shown. What I like to get, however, is the total number of laps done. Then move that up. And then uh, that's about it. Hit OK. So now you can see the number of laps that I've done. And then you can sort by vehicle, you can sort by day, fastest time, driver, whatever you want. So let's open up a quick uh, Star Mazda file here. So let's look. Yeah, why not? Spa. Actually, hang on. That's a Formula Renault file. So what we do is that now that we've opened it, we just click here and hit remove. Scroll a little bit further. Then. There we go. Formula mod. Let's open this one. So you can either double click, or you can click here and then hit open, or you can double click to open multiple files, like so. This is useful when you're trying to compare them, but we're not going to do that right now. So we're just going to remove that one. Stick with this one. So now the graphs are populated, and you can see a single lap around Spa. So now, just to get familiarized, this here shows what lap is being displayed on the graphs at any given time. Or laps, plural. So just to change the lap, just double click on the specific lap that you want. Now let's stay highlighted. This green border here shows what's being displayed. So you can click and drag it if you want to show a little bit of both laps here. You can see what's shaded corresponds to what lap selected. Or you can click and drag to show many laps, like so. Pretty simple. And then you can look through the different graphs here. So now we're going to tidy this up. Samples is just a little bit of everything, so we're not going to bother with that. We're going to drop down to driver here. So this shows pretty much all the driver inputs and everything that is uh, that's derived from that, such as lateral G, what gear you're in, your speed in kilometers an hour, throttle position, engine RPM, so to speak. Now first we can see that the engine RPM here is pretty much off the charts. It's difficult to read. It's not very helpful. So what we're going to do first is we're going to right click 
and hit proper or you can just hit F5. Now I'm going to move this off to the side here. These graphs are separated into groups. So engine RPM is in one group here. So that's one group is pretty much defined as one graph. And you can have multiple channels per graph. So you can have speed and throttle position on one graph. And all that means is that they're going to have the same scale. So if you have, say, throttle and brake on the same graph, that can be pretty useful. And you know what? We're going to do that right now. So we're going to add throttle position to group two. So just highlight group two, add channel, and just in the search bar, just type in brake, yep. brake pedal position. There we go. Adds a channel. Hit OK. Now you can see it's overlaid on top of that. Now if you want to see throttle over brake, just change which one is highlighted. Simple. Now back to what we're doing with the engine RPM. Now we're going to change the scale of the graph so it's a little bit easier to read. So we're just going to double click engine RPM or you can just select that. It's your choice. But here, first of all, we don't need five decimal places. So zero. And then we're going to change this max to 95,000 RPM. Okay. Now you can see it's a little bit easier to read. It's not running off the graph, but the scale is a little bit too tall vertically. And since we don't need the RPM to go all the way down to zero, since we're assuming the car isn't stopping, we're just going to set this to a minimum of 4,000. There we go. It's a little bit better to read now. It shows a little bit more detail. Hit OK. Now, if you want, if the data becomes a little cluttered and you want to hide something, right click and then just hit hide channel. Get rid, get rid of that. Or you can just use the hotkey hot control H. Now, this channel is blank because Motec couldn't find a suitable replacement for it in the iRacing uh, data. So it's pretty much a dead channel. So again, we're going to hit F5 or right click and select group 5. Now we're going to add the steering channel. Alright, so steering wheel angle is exactly what we wanted. And then move up to group 5. Now we can just delete this. Hit OK. So this looks nice and all, but you can see here the scale isn't right. In other words, this isn't really representative of what the steering wheel is doing. And it can often throw off what you're looking at. So we're just going to go to properties and just modify the scale. Going to set it to manual and then a good way to look at it is negative 180 to 180. Done and done. And then you can change negative 180 to 180 depending on what car you're in. So you can see the entire travel. Again, we don't need this many decimal places. Properties. Double click. One. There you go. Much nicer to look at. And let's do the same thing for brake and throttle. Now a lot of this is just busy work, but it tends to make it easier to look at when you're reading through the data. And again, same thing for G-force lateral. Let's go to two decimal places. And at the bottom here, you can see a bunch of gauges. Now these are useful for seeing when you're hitting our, when you're hitting red line on upshifts and such. So you can see here that there's a little part of the graph that shows. And then you can see that it's going past it. So this little thing isn't very useful. So we're going to change that. Right click, properties, and then we're going to Go to color bands. Now you can see the range 7,000 to less than 8,000. We're going to edit that. So, from my knowledge, the rev limit in the Star Mazda is around 8,500. And then we're not going to specify a maximum. There we go. So, pretty much, if this needle goes past 8,500, that that means we know we're hitting maximum RPM and that means we should be shifting up earlier. And now you're probably going to point out that 
oh, I want to see this in miles an hour and not kilometers an hour. It's a very simple fix. Again, right click, and then you can use these channel properties, or you can just right click on the graph. But now we can just hit the display unit here, and just change it to miles per hour. Now you can see the scale of the graph change automatically, so that's something to keep an eye out for. Pretty simple so far. And now again, this here is uh, connected to the channel that we deleted earlier. So we're just going to change that. See, it says unavailable here. Again, steering angle. Now make sure that this is set to negative 90 and 90, otherwise the angle of the steering wheel on screen won't show what the uh, wheel is actually doing here. And the other thing uh, you should do, which I forgot to point out, set this to anti-clockwise because in iRacing negative values for steering means right hand turn. There we go. Again, same thing, you can, you can do the same thing here. I'm just not going to do it, save time. So now we can go to engine. And we don't need a lot of this. For example, fuel, we don't need a lot of this. You can delete this. If you want to delete entire pages, right click here. And just hit delete worksheet. And then tires. You have to select these manually because our uh, Motec doesn't find these on its own. So which is odd because I found this one, not this one, but again, it's a simple fix. Just delete this and add the appropriate channel. Friction circle, uh, the scale is completely wrong here, but again, easy fix. Just change it, manual scale, calculate, or you can just do a scale you want. You can just refresh it here, set it to auto. Same thing here, oops properties. That's what I meant to do. Refresh it. So now it's a lot more readable. So at any time, if you want to save this, hit save and it saves it. Don't be like me. Save it every now and then. Otherwise, uh, you'll lose a, a lot of work. And I've done it more than once. So just a word to the wise. So a lot of this stuff may or may not make sense to you at this time, but uh, something we'll pick up on later. So now that we know how to edit the base sheet that we that comes with Motec, we can start to make our own. For example, in driver, let's make a channel that says what the slip angles for the tires are under braking. Or actually, let's uh, it's a little bit complicated at the moment. Let's make a brake uh, pressure channel. Now these are dead at the moment. So let's just delete these. So let's just reconstruct this graph from scratch. So now for braking, things that'd be useful. The slip angle, so the decel of the brakes. What that means is a difference from the speed of the wheels to the speed at which the car is going. So what that means is we need to take channels and then find the difference of the vehicle speed to the wheel speed. For example, for locking up the inside tires, you can see that the speed at the wheel is a lot lower than what the speed of the car is. So let's add a graph for that. So add time distance graph. An outing graph is a graph that shows all the laps at once. Now this is good for tire pressures and stuff. And uh, we'll probably do that a little bit later. Now you can color graph, histograms, suspension histograms, scatters, and these are all different kind of uh, graphs that'll be useful. So let's just add a time distance graph. Now it'll automatically put out what channels you want to add. So let's add a channel. So let's do speed. So ground speed is the speed at which the car is moving, and all these are with the speeds at the various corners of the car we're going at. So let's add ground speed at first. Now you can change this to whatever unit you want. I'm just going to go to miles an hour. And again, we don't need six decimal places. So one or two is usually good enough. Okay, so now 
gives us a nice big graph. So now if you want to check what the right front is doing, so let's add front right, FR. So let's add that. And let's, we want it in the same group. So let's just move it up. There we go. And now keep an eye out that this is in meters per second. So channel properties, go to miles per hour. Again, only need one decimal point. Now you can see how they're slightly different as the car is braking, that sort of thing. So now if you want to really look really close at something, for example, turn one, you double click on the graph here where you want to start looking, and then move the mouse to here, and you can see that. And then you can see what the tire is doing through the braking zone and through the middle of the corner. As comparison, let's add the front left tire. Move it up. And again, change the units. Two miles per hour. Now you can see the front right is locking up a little bit more, but that makes sense because turn one in Suzuka is a right-hander. And now, just so you can see, you can use T as track, but as you can see, this is clearly not Suzuka. So that means we need to generate the track. So we just go to this button here. And then we go to generate track. So now the reason Motec got confused is because Suzuka is a figure of eight. It's a crossover track. So that's why I got confused and gave us a bunch of jibber, uh, gibberish. So what we just do is we generate the track. And this time we identify it as a crossover circuit. There you go, Suzuka. And done. So it gives you a track map here. And this highlighted black area just shows us what part of the track we're looking at. For example, if we click and drag, and we can change what part of the track we're looking at. Now, obviously, when this window is up, we can't see what the rest, what the actual data is showing us. So what you can do is you can hit Control Shift T, and it turns on transparency for the track. And then you can just uh, toggle it on and off with Control Shift T. But as you can see, it's a little bit hard to read when you're looking at data. So we're just going to go to properties and then we're going to override colors and then just change the color scheme to whatever you want. And you can also change the size and thickness of the lines on the track. So let's just go up on the track a little bit. And obviously you can't read that. So We're not going to do that right now, but just something to think about. There you go. You can toggle this on and off with just T and not Control Shift T. And again, double clicking on here, remove channels. So now we're just going to make a quick outing graph in tires. So now to add a new sheet, you hit Control F7. Go to tires, and then you add worksheet. And then let's like uh, pressures. It gives us a bl blank sheet. Now we're going to add an outing graph. So channels, let's add. Oops. And then you can control click to open four of them at the same time. These are in KPA, but you can change them to PSI if you want. And scale to your needs. Now, if you want to compare data from one car to another, which is very useful, what you can do is you can open up. Now here I'm just going to close files, all my files. And now I'm going to open up a run that I did. And I'm going to open up a run that another driver did. Need to find them first. 
There we go. Now I'm going to zoom out and go back to driver. Driver general. And this is around the Texas Oval. Oval track, as you can see. Now, you can tell whose lap you're looking at here by looking here. But, if you click this tab here, it shows different sessions. For example, Adam, my teammate, was nice enough to send me some data. So, and we can click and drag here. So, this red dot represents what lap is being shown currently on these graphs here. So, let's take my fastest time and check his fastest time. So what this does is it overlays his data next to mine. So as you can see here, the black lines are his and the colored lines are mine. However, if we don't want to do that, we can set that this defaults all the channels to red that are mine and all the channels that are his to black. It makes it easier to compare. And again, we can hide by looking at so obviously you can see he's uh, getting off the throttle later than I am and he's getting onto it a lot earlier than I am. Just small things you can notice. And now if you don't have the time to make uh, a setup sheet or a workbook by yourself, what you can do is you can download a master file off of the iRacing forums. Uh, Peter Chamberlain made an excellent file which uh, pretty much encompasses everything that you'd ever need to know for a for a workbook. So what we're going to do is we're going to go get that. Again, link is going to be in the description. So, Peter Chamberlain, excellent guy. So now just click this download file, master v7, and then, again, I already downloaded it. So now I just unzip the file, extract all, hit extract, and then this pops up. So this is just pretty much the entire workbook that he made. Now to open it in MoTeC, we need to click open a workspace and hit import. So now we're going to navigate to where he, to wait, to where we saved it. Master V7 again and now change this to MCT PRJ this is because uh, he first made this master uh, file in MoTeC 1.0 and we're using 1.1 click here hit open highlight and then hit OK again shows everything that you need to know navigate back to documents iRacing telemetry. There you go. And again you can use it however you want. There you go. So I hope this was uh, helpful and uh, hopefully you start to use Montec. Thank you.